Welcome back to another episode of our, on our YouTube channel here. And today I'm in my Fent tractor just bringing my planter back over to the barn. We're going to switch her over and start planting some brassicas today. Um, and normally it's, it's July 14th. And normally I start on them on the 15th, like the middle of July. And normally if I only had, you know, one farm and a few fields to do, I would wait a couple weeks, you know, wait till like the last week in July. But since I have so many fields to do, I have, you know, 30, 40 fields to do. But I just can't. I got to start early and you know hopefully finish up by August first. But um, you know I was so worried about EHD early on, and we had like four inches of rain over Fourth of July week, so that's good. So the EHD thing is a little bit out of my mind. But uh, all our bean fields, basically, so many of them didn't make it. They just with the drought, they just got hammered by deer. So we're gonna have to put a lot more brassicas in so than I normally do. Some of those big bean fields that didn't make it, I'm gonna put them into our Pro Brassica Analogics mix. So that's what we're doing today. We're going over and we start where we did the pond on the last one. We got a couple of big deer going there. We got a couple of things going. We're gonna plant that stuff and then uh, some of the deer that I'm hunting that I thought I'd be hunting have changed. Uh, switched up deer. Some blue that I didn't think that we're going to and some that I thought we're going to didn't. So we'll be re-strategizing on some different deer here too. So once again, thanks for watching. Okay, right now we're putting in the um, Analogix Pro Brassica blend. And really like one of my favorites, there's more than one way you can do it, that's for sure. The field we planted like three days ago, you can already see it all starting to germinate. So hard to have this brilliant we're planting these brassicas today and it'd be so nice to use that that fent tractor it's so awesome to to plant with and stuff but i just have to take the time to pull those duels off because we right now when we're doing uh brassica seeds i like to rototill first and use a brilliant just makes it a perfect seed bed for for these brassicas and you know we just leave the tire tracks in there and on a brilliant here you got the these chisels here that go right where the tires are that will fluff that up again when you drive over that you know rototilled field that tire will sink in you know five six inches and those will fluff it back up again so that seed is still goes on a level um level soil but yeah i just i think it'd be too much i mean it's not doesn't take that long i've had my, my impact over here and have to take it off but um i'll just have to put it on a smaller tractor but it, after planting all year in that in that fent <laughs> corn and beans you kind of hate to get out of it to get anything else but anyway i've got george and donnie disking and rototilling ahead of me and steven is fertilizing and liming and now i'm just gonna pull up to my that thunder creek uh diesel trailer and the thing that's so awesome about having that is not just the diesel and def fluid that you can just bring out in the field with you on the back it's got a, a motor with a you got lights you got electric a generator you got uh air compressor so i gotta clean all these out you can see when they drove it over here down the road this things are just full of packed with dust so we'll clean that out while we're waiting for them to get back with the other tractors all right spray lubricant too i was gonna pull, spray the chains on that thing i just cleaned it so get some cable lubricant on there as well on these chains on, choke on. All right, she got all the dust out of there. And just make sure, you know, on, like on these brilliance and some of the newer ones, you get the electronic acre meters. Make sure you always use air and not water. I've done that before. You use a power wash to get some of that mud off there and stuff, and, you, and the acre meter never works again. So it's nice to let that mud, if you have mud packed in the, those packing wheels or anything, just let it dry and then blow it out with air. But make sure every time you plant, because I see all those little cups down there were filled with little tiny rocks and 
hardened sand and and stuff that you might keep those clean especially like now like early on when we're doing corn and beans i always feel like i got you know if something goes wrong i got two two more tries at it i got brassicas and then i got our amazing grains late season but now we're already to on strike number two on some of these the beans that didn't make it, we're putting in all the brassicas on that so now really make sure i fertilize and make sure my planters and everything are ready to go that we don't have any stupid mistakes on it and for fertilizer two years ago i took soil samples of everything and i took and i did every individual field and of course a lot of them were uh, a little low on ph but you can only move it up so fast so we did all the egg lime that we could use so on this time i used uh I know it's not quite up to that six, eight, or seven where we want on a lot of these food plots yet. We're still working some of these up. So he used about 100 pounds of Pell lime per thousand of lime, and you can do about two tons of ag lime max on a field is about what it can accept without and, and use it without just being an overabundance of it that it can't use anyway. So we put 400 pounds of, of ag lime and just 100 of P and a 100 of K in our fertilizer just because everything should have been you know, up to speed on the P and K and nitrogen stuff over the last time that I did every individual field to make sure I got it perfect. So now we're just on those few years that we're doing, it's just, okay, you assume it's gonna take about 100 pounds out you know, each year, so that's what I put back in, and that seemed to, has seemed to work pretty good. Uh, we'll have to check the pH again and see all the you know, work that we did two years ago, what it has done now, but we're still gonna use Pell Lime just in case, because I know it's not gonna be up to that six, eight, or seven. You know, you're talking five eights and stuff like that. So you're not gonna move them up to seven and with one application of, of lime. So that's what we got in our fertilizer. And Steven just fertilized, Donnie and George disking it in. We're gonna swap tractors and we'll hit it. hate getting out of that fence. It's like, <clears throat> unfortunately I had to park the Bentley in the garage and get the Camry station wagon out. Okay, right now we're putting in the um, Analogic Pro Brassica blend. And really like one of my favorites, and I can, we can forget a little bit later in the year, like if we were going at the end of the month, the first week in August is the Perfect 10, and I'll plant a bunch of Perfect 10, but that seed has wheat and some peas and stuff in it which is perfect for the mix you want it in there that wheat and rye and peas and stuff coming up you know where early on they might not be eating the the brassica mixes but they're always in that wheat but you can't do that in a brilliant with those seeds all mixed together i need like my 750 drill or you need a broadcast spreader or something and i just like when i'm doing brassicas like this to use the brilliant the egg leader stuff I mean, just make it perfect. I want every inch of that field to have the exact amount of seed, the exact depth that needs to be at, the exact amount, and everything. So right now, like I said, when this, you know, we already failed on a lot of this seed, um, you know, with the, with the beans, how they just didn't grow with this drought and stuff we've been putting a lot in. I can't afford to have another one um, fail on me. So I think what I'll do is I'll put one bag in each, each one of these because we're going to, we're going to have a lot of this to do anyway, and you don't want to get low with this stuff. I might adjust this rate a little higher. So I just set it for canola, which is basically rape seed, and that's really small, but there is, you know, the purple tops and some other stuff, and they're coated, and they're a little bit bigger. So usually what I'll do is I'll take the biggest seed in there, you know, and kind of figure out what, uh, you know, the rate for that seed and let the rest fall in behind it so yeah this is um, one one acre so they, they want like eight pounds for the acre so I sort of have it set on for the for canola but there's bigger seeds in there too so one thing I like to do in these is like one acre per bag I put one in each box and so I'm like, now I'm gonna put two in each box. So now there's six on each side. So that should be 12 acres. So I should have enough in there to do 24. And that way when I start getting down towards the end, I can see if my settings that I put this on were correct. Because it's always hard with mixes, you know, cause you're gonna be somewhere in between a bunch of different, different seeds. So, but I just know over the years that I usually put a little over three on a Brilliant and that's what I usually use my Pro Brass Cat. And like I said, I mean, I, I use, you know, my Rototiller and and you know all the equipment that i have but we certainly didn't start that way and my buddy right behind the camera
camera there, Justin, he just did his plots just with, you know, he fertilized and put the seed right on, right on the ground and killed the, killed the grass and weeds in the, in the field and just kind of, you know, ran over it to get it tucked down tight. And, and this seed is so small, all you need is good seed soil contact to that with the rain coming, that'll come up. You need minimal equipment. When I first started, Tiffany and I, we had our lawnmower that we mowed out plots in the grass with a riding lawnmower and then I killed it with a little Fimco sprayer and then we just hand seeded everything. So you don't, I mean I can show you the stuff that we're doing here. I just kind of like you to get the idea of like fertilizer rates and you know herbicides that we might be using and, and that kind of stuff and like the rates of the seed and you know probably the preferred, you know the best ways to do it but that's not the only way to do it. That's the way I do it that I have the equipment and I like to make sure it's pretty exact on everything. I like to make sure I don't, you know, when you broadcast it, you don't know some places are heavier and some are thin, but it still works just great. I mean, it works just fine. We did that for years, but so instead, you don't have to look and say, well, I don't have all that equipment. Tiffany and I did it with a lawnmower, a little 25 gallon Fimco sprayer, and uh, and that was it, and a, and a hand, hand broadcast seeder. So there's more than one way you can do it, that's for sure. Kind of rushing through this. I mean, it looks beautiful out right now and sunny and hot and humid, perfect growing conditions, but the storm is building and you know, you don't know. It's a kind of like pop-up storm. It could hit here or not, but we want to make sure we get a couple, at least a couple fields in here before it rains, if it does. And we got several really good deer this year too that I want to make sure that we got the right food and the right places and the right setups and everything for them. And like I said, it doesn't matter. You can just, there's lots of different options for you. You'll always have something you can put in. So it's never detrimental unless you're into September and don't have anything. But if you get to, to August and haven't done anything yet, you still got time for your amazing grains and, and that kind of stuff. So we're in the middle of, it's July 14th right now. Normally I don't start till the 15th, but with rain coming, as dry as it's been, we're not delaying a day. Okay. Okay, here we are at the field we planted like three days ago and we got a little bit of rain on it you can already see it all starting to starting to germinate starting to come up here so hopefully we get it's enough moisture underneath to keep that going um, it's a analogics pro brassica blend and this should be awesome right here we're going to do amazing grains out here up against the corn so this one's pretty much done hopefully in a couple months that we have a big one well i know we have a big one here that we may be hunting but hopefully he comes walks right through and follows our plan. But once again, everybody, thanks for watching. Um, next week we have, I'm introducing to you a new, a new spot that we just got and my number one buck at this point, he's my number one. Uh, we'll show you that buck and the setup that we planned for him. So keep subscribing and keep watching and thanks, uh, thanks again for coming to our YouTube page.